On today's episode, we're under attack. But seriously, for your consideration, a chainsaw review and a beam machine. Stick around, you'll even learn a little bit about biology. Well, look, you gotta understand, we got about three acres of very healthy trees. A mixture of big dugs, like this huge mama right here, and ponderosa pines. And honestly, I would never take down a living tree if I didn't have to. But, we have a real problem here in our stand, and it is dwarf mistletoe. We've had experts, arborists, come and give us their assessment, and they honestly told us we should cut every damn tree down, but, or at least every 30 feet. We should only have one tree. But we just love our forest too much. So we're doing our best to mitigate the problem. When it gets in the trunk like this, there's no way to save this tree. There's no way to get rid of it. It sustains itself completely from the mother. It's an invasive organism that doesn't even require photosynthesis. So, sad to say, this one had to come down. So that little guys, like this, could have a chance at growing up to be big mamas. Attack of the parasitic plant. Infections can retard growth, reduce seed production, and long term, it can kill the trees. Pruning and removing infected trees is the best management. Plant native mistletoe resistant species to replenish your forest. Welcome back to the barn. So there you have it. This is the Bauer 16 inch chainsaw from Harbor Freight. It's a great tool. Um, been very impressed. I've had it for a year. I haven't used it like super heavily, but I've done some pretty heavy duty jobs with it. Um, it is the replacement for its predecessor, which was the cheapo Harbor Freight Portland 14 inch, which I was very happy with this original chainsaw when I bought it five years ago and I did some nasty jobs. Um, I did a lot of wood carvings with it. I enjoy chainsaw wood carving. It's one of my favorite things to do. And like I said, five years straight of just running this thing nonstop. I even had one nasty job where I had to process some railroad ties, greasy, oily, nasty railroad ties. And that stuff's just horrible. Uh, but this thing cut through it like a beast. Uh, and after five years, it finally gave out. I opened the whole thing up. The whole gear component was basically made of plastic. So it just is this big drum with plastic teeth that, um, that's more chewed up than an old pair of your undies, Fred. It just eventually got chewed through it. Somehow it lasted for five years and it never gave me any trouble. And like I said, I used the heck out of it. And then what you see before you was the one I went and returned the original for. And this iteration lasted six months, five, six months, barely before that drum got completely chewed up, opened it up. Basically the same exact chainsaw I bought five years ago, but it didn't even last five months. So five years ago, this was a decent chainsaw and maybe it was just mine. 
But instead of, you know, I always do the extended warranty. I would recommend that at Harbor Freight. Anything goes wrong, you just basically go get a brand new one. And that's what I did, and I regretted it. So I went back and I said, look, can I just, instead of exchanging for another one that's just going to give out in six months, can I just take this exchange, uh, return, refund, whatever, and upgrade to the Bauer, which is what I did. And I'm very happy. So a, a year later, and here she is going strong. I bought this specifically to turn into my beam machine. That's what you've got here is a very primitive but effective beam maker. So when I do take down a big tree and I want to make some nice straight beams, either for mantle pieces or uh, wood, you know, just project wood or sculptures, I can make a nice square beam, as, as you'll see here. This thing cuts like a charm. Look at that straight cut. Many different sizes, and you can set it up however you want. I use a 2x4. Look at that. It almost looks hand cut. Like I said, it can do a variety of sizes. We even push that 16 inch bar all the way to its limit on that one. And I'll go over this a little bit more in depth of how this works. And hopefully I can find the link to this because I bought this a year ago. I don't even, I'm sure I got it on Amazon, but I don't really remember too much about it. I had actually made my own out of basically a wood sluice box and so you had wood on two sides and wood on top and then the whole thing attached with a clamp or something oh yeah that takes me back you know there's something you should know about me if i can make something i'd much rather not buy it if anyone wants to know more about that project just leave me a comment below and that worked great i got away with that for a whole season of making wood but I thought, ah, it's time to upgrade to something more professional. Uh, I stopped using gas-powered chainsaws a long time ago. They're dirty. They smell. They, I mean, they're awesome and all. And I, you know, if that's the avenue you want to go, they're great. But I got tired of, um, you know, going out on a cold day and not being able to get one to start. And not only that, I don't need to work in the way out back, out back anymore. So I have access to electricity and it's just so much cleaner and easier. And you can even find uh, eco-friendly oils for these things. Um, but like I said, I don't need to be way in the outback. And sometimes I do like portability. So in that regard, I bought this about three years ago. And I am incredibly happy with it. This is the Ryobi. Um, basically the Home Depot brand. A lot of the big guys are making these now. And they're awesome. This is a 40 volt. It comes with this big brick battery, which makes it pretty heavy. But, you know, I get a lot of use out of this. After three years, this battery is definitely starting to go out. I don't get as many cuts as I used to, and it takes a lot longer to charge it. But, yeah, this has been a great chainsaw. It could definitely use a sharpening, which I plan to do in the very near future. But, uh, so if you do need portability, these, these are, they're great. Um... I would have done a review of this chainsaw, but I have no complaints about it. So I guess consider this my review. It's an awesome chainsaw. It's never failed. I've processed trees twice the size of this 14 inch blade. And I've taken down some massive trees with this thing and uh, it's never given me any trouble. And I never felt like I was in danger of hurting myself or anyone else when I did that. And yeah, I can't speak highly enough about this chainsaw. If you need portability so but as far as the bower goes you know it was bought to basically replace the portland and i'm glad i did because a year of i wouldn't say heavy use i haven't um i wish i'd got more use out of it but as you could see from the footage it works great and i have no complaints it has some added safety features like a kickback shut off uh that always tricks me because i'll go to start it and i'll be like why don't the stupid thing start Oh, well, obviously. And uh, it's got a trigger safety as well. And uh, the beam machine. It fits great. I had to make a small retrofit to make this more permanent because this was originally designed to just be taken on and taken off. But I found that it kind of wiggled when I was trying to use it. And when you're trying to make a really straight beam, you don't want this twisting or turning too much. So I made this much more permanent, which I'll try to go over here in a minute. But um, yeah.
I like it. I'm very pleased with it. I would definitely buy it again. And I would definitely get the warranty for it just in case. Because I did open this one up and look at it too. And it's all plastic. It's just like the Portland. It's basically the same design, but it has a little bigger drum. But it's still, it's it's just all plastic. You know, and I really have to fault Harbor Freight for this because this would literally need one component to make this a working chainsaw again. This motor works amazing. There's nothing wrong with this motor. And I contacted them and I went through several different channels. You cannot get the replacement part for this, or at least at the time that I was looking, they won't replace that drum. They want you to buy this whole chainsaw brand new, which is just, it's dumbfounding that things are like that. Because one part and this would work again. But anyway, I'll try to just go over this real quick. Um, basically what you got in the box was the beam machine itself, um, with this, the nuts, a couple washers. I might've actually added this washer. Um, so the whole thing is just kind of free rotating. Turn it up for you. And then you've got these cool adjustment screws. So I usually just use a two by four. And that's how I make a long straight cut. So the two by four sits in here. Um, you probably saw it in the other images. And if you wanted to use a bigger beam, you could. Um, but this allows you to, you, you can take this whole thing off and just use a big one. Or you can adjust it back and forth depending on what you have. <laughs> you know, scrap wood, long wood you have lying around. But basically it did come with some hardware. It had some screws here. These are my own that I took off something else because... They had these really nice rubber bushings and they were a little bit longer so that they could actually bridge the gap. I honestly don't just check out the ad that I'll show you uh, or, you know, uh, whatever you see on Amazon. Well, shucky darn, I guess mine's not available anymore, but there's a lot of comparable devices out there that work just the same. This is all my own setup and what I ended up doing was actually drilling this out. There may have been a hole here originally, like sometimes chainsaws have these. And I think there might have been one there, so I might have used a hole that was already going through the blade. But uh, you can see I added the washers, and it came with this um, Allen wrench uh, adjustment crank down that you could choose to put in any one of these holes I guess if you wanted a different angle or something but I used the center one and I tightened it down as hard as it would go and uh, it still moves around from time to time all these components need to be uh, should always be checked and tightened you know anytime you're working like before you even go to use it just tighten everything up and you'll be a happy camper and hopefully never never have an accident but uh, you can see that it rotates freely through the gap, safely and freely. And, and like I said, I've never, I've never felt in danger or like I, you know, was doing something unsafe. This is all very stable. And you know, take all precautionary methods whenever trying to do anything like this. And uh, you know, you should never have any problems. But uh, good luck out there.